Hey guys, welcome. Today we're gonna be integrating Firebase Storage into our app for us to be able to upload images and display the uploaded images into our application. In our last video, we already have integrated Image Picker into our app for us to be able to pick images from gallery or take a photo from our device camera like this. However, if we try to send these images, we are getting an implemented error because we haven't still yet implemented the upload feature in our app. So inside our send chat function, we have this to do to remind us that we need to implement the image upload feature here. So this is what we're gonna be completing today so that we can be able to upload images to Firestore and be able to display the uploaded images inside our chat screen. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to go to Firebase and click to this uh, go to console and click on your uh, project to be able to get here you need to create your Firebase project and then integrate your Flutter app. You can check my video on Firebase integration here in case you need a guide. And once you're here, click on this build. And click this get started. Let's start with the production immediately. And then you can set the cloud storage location here. So since already set, let's leave this as is and click this done button. All right, we now have activated our storage. So let's go back to our Flutter project. So the next thing you need to do is to add Firebase Core and Firebase Storage inside your fastback.yaml file. Alright, Firebase Core and Firebase Storage has already been added. And inside our main function, we need to initialize Firebase like this. And don't forget to call this widget Flutter Binding that ensure initialize method. Alright, so after those setup, we're now ready to code. Alright, to save time, I already created this image repository class that contains these upload image files that we're gonna be using. And I also created the list of supported file extensions inside this file extension enum. So this upload file images is the main function that we're gonna be using anywhere within our app. And this function returns the list of uploaded image URLs that accept the list of files and the path where you want to save the images. And uh, inside this function, we're creating the list of URLs of type string. And the next thing we need to do is to check if the files is empty. And if so, we return the empty URLs immediately. If it's not empty, we look for the files using a for loop. And we check if the file is not null. If so, we extract the image extension using this helper method. And what this extension does is to split the file path at the dots and retrieve the last segment. For example, if this is the file path, it splits it at this point and retrieve this part. And save it to a variable. And once we have the extension, we look for the file extension values and check if the value name is equal to this extension that we have extracted and we return the value. If none of the condition was met here, 
we return the file extension.jpg as a default. You can also throw an error here if the file path is not among the extensions that you support. But for me, I will just return it a default like this and let Firebase throw the error. Alright, so after extracting the extension, we also extract the md5 hash of the file and use it as the file name to make sure that each file has their own unique name. Because if two images have the same name, the other image will override the other, causing the URLs to be invalid. And after extracting the md5 hash, we construct the image path. This path coming from here is the path directory where we want to save the file. And this md5 hash is the name of image and then suffixing the original extension. Alright, so once we already have the image path, we are now ready to upload the file. And we are uploading the file using this helper method, passing the file, the image path that we have created, and this metadata with the content type relevant to the file extension. And inside this helper method, we check if the file is null, and we return null immediately. If the file is not null, we fetch the storage ref using the ref function of this Firebase storage class and calling this child method passing the path. After that, we fetch this upload task using this Firebase storage ref and calling this put file method passing this file and the metadata. After that, we fetch the task snapshot from the upload task calling the when complete method and passing an empty callback. This empty callback is a function that you wanna call after the method completes. So it says here that it is the synchronous equivalent of the finally block. Once we have the task snapshot, we now fetch the image URL from the task snapshot.ref calling this get download URL method and then finally return the image URL. Now that we have this URL, we check if it's not null and if so, we add the URL to the list of URLs and then finally return the URLs. Alright, and then here in our send message function, we reference to this image upload repository and then call the upload image files passing the path and then the images. And then once we have these URLs, we create a copy of this chat using this copy with method, updating the photos with the URLs that we have here, and then update the chat type to chat type image. And then this new chat is now what we're gonna save to the database, like this. So, uh, alright, that's it. And uh, let's test this out. Alright, let's test this. Oops, we forgot the rest of our storage. Let's go ahead and fix that. Let's allow read and write if the user is not null.
All right. It looks like uh, already sent. Let's check our storage. Okay. Okay. We now have this uh, ROMs directory created. This one. This chats. All right. As you can see, we already have this. Uh, Two images uploaded. Look at that. It's perfectly done. Let's try to check our database if the chat we sent contains the image URLs that we have just uploaded. All right, as you can see, this contains the image URLs as expected. So the next thing we need to do is to display these network images inside our application. All right, so this is our chat bubble widget, which is this one. And down here, I created this image display widget that accepts the list of photos. And uh, we return the grid view dot builder here, and we shrink wrap to true to avoid getting an error because this is a scrollable widget, and our chat screen is also scrollable, so we need to shrink wrap this to prevent getting an error. And we assign the photos that length as our item count, and assign this sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count as our grid delegate giving a cross axis count of 2 and cross axis spacing of 4 and main axis spacing of also 4 and in our item builder we return this cache network image from the cache network image package using this cache network image for displaying a network image is advantageous because of its caching capability placeholder and error widgets image transformations cache management and many more so I'd recommend using this for you to gain more flexibility. Alright, so how can we display this here? So inside our chat bubbles card, let's wrap the child with a column. Alright, and alright, so here we need to check if the photos is not empty and we add the image display widget. Alright, that's it. Let's refresh this. Okay. Alright, it works like magic, baby. However, we have this space here, which is, uh, which is a So to remove this, we need to check if the chat message is not empty, and it's only then we need to display this chat message. Okay, let's refresh it. Okay. And the last thing we need to do is to wrap this column with a padding of 4 to make it looks a little bit better. Alright, that's it. It looks better now. So let's try to test this one more time. Let's try to send a text with an image. Alright, so since the text is a resender, let's just simply align it to the left.
Okay, we're done. That's it. And I hope this helps. And if so, please give me a thumbs up, share it to your friends, and don't forget to smash the subscribe button.